Hello everyone, happy Valentine's Day. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, also comment and subscribe. Let's get started. This puzzle was suggested by one of my subscribers, Human, about a month ago. Thank you, Human, for the suggestion. Today is a special day and here's a special puzzle for you. A heart made of two congruent semicircles and a square is inscribed in a unit circle as shown. Find the area of the heart. So what we're going to do is, first of all, you know, we always make some good connections. All right. So notice that the, our heart is made up of a square and two semicircles, which basically make a full circle. So we're going to find the area of the circle and then we're going to find the area of the square. Then we'll add them up. But first, we got to find the radius of the semicircles. OK, cool. So let's go ahead and make some connections here then. I'll start here. I'll go from this point to that point and I'll try to go through the center. So this is the center of my large unit circle. OK, that's an important point. And then obviously I want to draw the other diagonal of the square because that's going to help me with, with some calculations. And of course, I need to make more connections. The more the merrier, right? I'll make this connection. And then I will be making one more connection, so bear with me. And for this connection, I just want to make sure that it basically goes through the center of the semicircle. So I don't know why I didn't mark it there. So about that would be the center, I think. So let me go ahead and connect this one. So what's going to happen here is basically when you make that connection, it's supposed to be, I'm trying to make it a straight line. Okay. So it's supposed to be basically going through the center because these circles are basically tangent, right? Okay, cool. So let's call the radius of the semicircle R. So we have an RR here. This is going to be 2R. Now, what are we going to do? What's the strategy here? Well, the strategy is going to be pretty interesting. And I don't think we used this before. Uh, this is a special puzzle, so it requires some special method. Okay, cool. Now, how do we proceed? So... I'll be making one more connection with your permission because that'll hopefully make things more clear. So if I go ahead and connect the center of the semicircle to the center of the square, this should be a 90 degree angle. And then this should be a 45 degree angle, don't you think? OK, this is also 45, but we don't care about the other one. Now, here's the critical part. I know this length is R and this length is also R, right? This is a point on both the circle and the semicircle. And since this is a unit circle, the whole thing from this point to that point is 1. If I subtract r, then I get basically 1 minus r, right? So this is r, this is 1 minus r. Okay, so I got that length too. Now I got a couple more lengths to take care of. Let's go ahead and do that. Now since the hypotenuse of this right triangle, let me shade one of them. There's four of those, but I'm just going to shade this one because if I do the other one, it's going to be confusing. But you get the idea. So we have a right triangle whose hypotenuse is 2R. Not only a right triangle, but it's also isosceles. Therefore, the legs should be square root of 2R and the square root of 2R. So this whole thing is here, here is square root of 2R. Cool. But what about this one? Well, we should also notice that this is square root of 2R. But from this point to that point, we're talking about the radius of the unit circle again. So it should be 1. If I, if I subtract the square root of 2r, this piece is going to be what? 1 minus square root of 2 times r. Correct? OK, great. Now, i got to find this piece because that's basically the critical piece that I need for my calculations. And how do I find that piece, right? OK, to be able to find that piece, this is what I'm going to do from the height of this triangle whose base is square root of 2r and whose height is square root of 2r, I'll subtract this quantity, 1 minus square root of 2r, and it should give me that length or the other height that I'm looking for. Cool. So what does that look like? It basically looks like 1 minus square root of 2r being subtracted from, being subtracted from square root of 2r, right? And if you do that, you're basically going to be getting 2 square root of 2r minus 1. So that length is basically this one here. Let me write it down. 2 root 2r minus 1. Now, here's the triangle that I want you to focus on. Okay? So we do have a triangle 
one of the angles is 45 degrees. What I'm going to do is on the next slide, I'm going to go ahead and copy that triangle. I'll make it bigger and then we'll just work on that triangle. And that's going to be our solution method here. But how do we work on that? Stay tuned. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and go to the next one. So here, basically what we have is we have a right triangle. Well, it's not a right triangle, so correction. We do have a triangle whose angles are given like this. So this is a 45 degree angle, right? And this length here is two root two R minus one. Great. And this one is one minus R. And this one is, okay, let me go back here. This piece here is, I didn't talk about that. I just want to mention that real quick. And that length is R. Cool? Okay, great. So we do have this right triangle. Well, I keep saying right triangle. Sorry about that. It's not a right triangle. It's a triangle. How do we solve for R here, right? We, ho we have three lengths. We have one angle, which is 45 degrees. How do you go about solving for R? Okay, well, this calls for what? Law of cosines. Exactly. Okay, so we're going to use law of cosines. How do we use law of cosines? Let's just remember that. Law of cosines basically gives you a relationship between the three side lengths and one of the angles in a triangle. It works for any triangle. That's what's cool about that. So you can go ahead and use that. But guess what? We don't have to use the law of cosines. We could also use another method. But guess what? Okay, let me show that method. Let me show that method. And then I'll use law of cosines because I said that I was going to use something more interesting. Okay, the other method involves dropping the height here and then forming a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So in this triangle, obviously, you know that the hypotenuse is given, right? And then you can basically calculate this one, this length here, because you know the hypotenuse, just divide that by root 2, and then subtract that length from R, and then you'll get this piece, right? And then you can just use Pythagorean theorem. So that's one of the methods. But I'd like to use the uh, law of cosines because it's fun. So let's go ahead and use law of cosines here. All right, awesome. So this should be R, right? So how do we write law of cosines? Well, I'm going to be using this side as our reference. So it's going to look like this. 1 minus R quantity squared is equal to 2 root 2 minus 2 root 2 R minus 1. And I was telling you that I was going to give you the law of cosines. So it looks like this. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB multiply by cosine C. So it's basically in a in a triangle ABC triangle, this is the law of cosines. Of course, we're using angle C here as our reference angle. Cool. And in this case, we're using the 45 degrees. So it looks like this then. A 1 minus R quantity squared is equal to 2 root 2 R minus 1 quantity squared plus R squared minus 2 times the product of those two sides that are R and 2 root 2 R minus 1. And then this will be multiplied by cosine 45, which is root 2 over 2. And the 2 cancels out, which is kind of nice. And then this gives us a nice quadratic equation. So let's go ahead and simplify this and solve for R. Okay, how do we do that? We're going to expand here. So this is going to give us 1 minus 2R plus R squared. And the right-hand side is going to give you Remember, when you square 2 root 2, it's going to give you 8. So it should be 8R squared minus 4 root 2R plus 1 plus R squared. And now here you have to distribute basically root 2R, but it's negative root 2R. So when you multiply by 2 root 2, root 2 times 2 root 2 is 4. So that should give you minus, minus 4R squared. And then when you multiply negative root 2R by negative 1, that should give you positive root 2 r and that's it. Cool. Now let's go ahead and simplify this. 1 cancels out and r squared cancels out. Nice. Now since we have more r squared here on the right hand side, everything looks positive. Let's go ahead and collect everything there. So I have 8 r squared minus 4 r squared which is 4 r squared and then I have now minus 4 root 2 r and then plus 4 root 2r. So they're like terms. I can just go ahead and um, add them. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So that gives me negative 3 root 2r. And then I'm going to bring the negative 2r over to the right. But that's going to become a positive quantity, which is 2r. And the whole thing is going to equal 0 since we've taken care of everything, right? Okay, cool. Now, there's many ways to solve this problem. Obviously, this is a quadratic, but there's no constant, so it's easy to solve. So one method we can use definitely is 
basically we can just go ahead and put everything on the same side we already did. So I can just go ahead and factor. Or one of the methods is, which, which is something that I kind of like, is leave the r squared alone and then put all the r terms on the other side and go from there. So here's how it goes. I have 4r squared, and then on the other side, I have negative 2r, remember? And then I had negative 3 root 2r. So I'm going to add that, 3 root 2r, and then I have minus 2r, right? So this is basically what I have. Let's go ahead and factor this a little bit. And now I can do, basically take out the r, 3 root 2 minus 2, times the quantity r, and obviously r does not equal zero. We know that, right? Hopefully we do. And since r does not equal zero, I can divide both sides by r, then that's going to give me something nicer, obviously. 4r is equal to 3 root 2 minus 2. And finally, we're going to divide both sides by r, and this should give us 3 root 2 minus 2 divided by 4. And this brings us to the end of this video. Happy Valentine's Day again. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another video at the same time. Until then, be safe. Take care. Bye-bye.